we sure this is all the kids that want to come up today? Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, grown-ups, this is for you first. I need you to do me a big favor and keep your lips sealed. <laughs> That's the first thing. Second thing, parents of these beautiful children, you have another job to do. You have to help me with some self-control. <laughs> it's part of the lesson. All right, now, how many of you guys have ever heard of something called a Twinkie? I think so. No? Nothing? No? Gabby, have you ever heard of a Twinkie? No? Oh, Noah, Noah thinks he wants to join the story. All right, good idea, though. Good idea. What's a Twinkie? <coughs> Say. Oh, okay. Well, you guys don't know what a Twinkie is. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you about a Twinkie, okay? A Twinkie is just simply the best thing you've ever tasted in the whole wide world. <sighs> it is kind of like, it looks like a hot dog, kind of, but with a flat bottom. So it's like, it's like a curve like this, and it's yellow on the outside, and it's spongy. Do you know what spongy means? It's kind of like a sponge, but it's like, so like when you bite into it, it's soft, but it's airy. Oh, it's just so good. Oh. It's like vanilla cake, like just mm, delicious. And then on the inside, on the inside of this vanilla cake boat is vanilla cream frosting. Oh my goodness, you bite into it and it's just so, it's so gooey and sweet and delicious. And doesn't that just sound like the best thing ever? Now, how many of you think you want to try this? <laughs> now, watch this, watch this. Grown-ups, how many of you guys knew what a Twinkie was? <laughs> now, wait a second. All of these grown-ups out there knew what a Twinkie was, but none of them told you about it? What? I'm just saying, keep that in mind. Hold on a second. Now, when I described it to you, is this what you were picturing? Yeah. Doesn't this look so good? Oh, my goodness. All right, grab, grab it on stick because I didn't want, you know, fingers to be everywhere. If it doesn't come up with a stick, go ahead. No, oh yes, you have to eat it. Don't eat the stick though. Here you go. Don't eat the stick, okay? Here. Yummy. Eat that. Let me hit the stick. Here, we'll give one to Papa because he, he chose to come for the story. He knew what I was doing. <laughs> We'll give one to Papa because he, he, he listened to me. I told him to come up with a story. <laughs> Doesn't it taste so good? No, yes! Doesn't it? With over sugared. Yeah, over sugared cake. This is just so good. How many of you, after trying it, now you want more? Yes, I want more. Oh my goodness. And now, watch this. How many grown-ups out there really wish they had come up for story? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, do you know that Twinkies are just like God? What? what? How are Twinkies like God? Because they're God sweet and they're good. Yeah. yeah, because they're good and they're sweet. They're good and they're sweet, right? Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of ways that Twinkies are like God. The first way that Twinkies are like God is that you guys didn't know about a Twinkie. How did you find out about the Twinkie? I had to tell you about it, right? 
And when I told you about it, did you get really excited? Yeah. And then when I showed you about it, did you get even more excited? Yeah. And when you got to experience it, wasn't that the best? Yeah. Well, God is the same way. <laughs> God is the same way. There are people out there. Did you know there are people out there that don't know about God? Yeah. How are they going to find out about God? We have to share the good news about God to other people. We have to tell them how great he is. We have to use our words. We have to tell them all about all the good things he does for us. And we have to tell them to read the Bible so they can experience God's love for us, right? Because then they... <laughs> It's fine. Then they are going to want to share. They're going to want to share it, right? Right. They're going to want to share the good news about God. Now, shame on all these grown-ups for not sharing the good news of Twinkies with you. Yeah, Gabby shared hers with me. So we need to remind our grown-ups to also share the good news about God with others, right? Now, I have a treat for you. Wait a second, wait a second. I have a whole Twinkie for you to take with you. But here's the deal. You can't have this Twinkie until after lunch when mom and dad say it's okay. It is going to be so hard to sit through this whole church service and think about that delicious spongy cake frosting goodness you're going to be thinking about it the whole time aren't you you're going to be just can't wait until after lunch to have it i want you to keep that in mind and i want you to treat god the same way i want you to be just as excited about god and i want you to be just as excited to get to experience god and read your stories and read your bible and learn more about god now i'm not only going to give you one Twinkie. Because, because what are we supposed to do with our good news about God? Share. We're supposed to share it. So here's another job for you. I'm going to give you two, but they're not two for you. One is for you, but one is to share with somebody else. Just like we need to share the good news of God okay. with others. Can you guys do that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next time you guys will want to come up for Auntie Amanda's stories. I've chosen this song today, and we'll see how it goes. It's number 73 in your hymnal if you want to follow along. I'll give you a moment. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning a song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed trinity holy 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 though darkness hides thee though the eye of man thy great glory may not see only thou art holy beside thee, perfect in power, in 
love and purity. If you want to do the last with me, that's fine. Holy, holy, holy Lord. This morning's scripture reading comes from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8. And I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and Pastor Kim as he brings us today's message. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Be still. Know that I am God. No matter what kind of storms that we are going through today, God is inviting you and I that I am in control. God is saying that He is in control. Today, we have a high Sabbath that we are going to have communion that the scriptures may prepare our hearts and to turn tune our hearts with him. Please open your Bibles. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 8. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 8. Eight. I'm going to read. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. The Bible verse, it says, let this mind be in you. What kind of mind the scripture is telling us? Let's read verse 4. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. The Amplified Bible version says, let this attitude be like Jesus. <coughs> we often think being empty is a negative situation. Look at the picture. An empty house sounds lonely. No one, nobody wants to have an empty 
refrigerator without food. An empty wallet can be scary. An empty gas tank implies that it needs to be filled. Emptiness is generally not very assuring. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 8 tells us that Jesus, Jesus voluntarily emptied himself of his divine powers. No one emptied Jesus. It's very humiliating when someone tried to empty us, right? Jesus chose to be empty. He instead chose emptiness. His temptations were stronger than mine and ours. Jesus could not abandon his emptiness at any time and returned to heaven. He could, but he didn't. Satan wanted Jesus to use his hidden powers. But Jesus was empty of any personal agenda. Satan did not like Christ's emptiness. Satan wanted Jesus to sin by filling his emptiness with selfish desires. God calls you and me to empty ourselves. Empty ourselves. Is it easy? It's impossible. It's not easy or hard. It's impossible. We are full of pride and self instead of being fully full of the Holy Spirit. But emptying ourselves is something we vigorously resist. We get nervous when our cupboards are empty. We may think God hasn't adequately provided for us. We are then tempted to compromise our system of values. You and I are constantly emptied to fill ourselves with our own desires. It may be sports, hobbies, movies, certain websites, social medias, even our families, even our own self. This may be a good time for us to ask ourselves, is my primary desire to be full of God or are there idols in my life? Do I seek to fill the void in my life with God or with something else? If our idols fill us throughout the week, might this explain why we may sometimes not be hungry for God's word? There are times when I ask church members that whom haven't come to church for a while, when I contact them, there are times I hear from them, say, they're good. But we need to ask ourselves, without fellowshipping our church members and without associating with God, if we 
feel we are good is something wrong. How are you doing? I'm good. Just think about self. If we are not really related and having association with God and God's people, something we should feel emptiness in our hearts. It's not about good. Some, something that we should be hungry for God's word and having fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Many don't like to participate in a communion service. Unconfessed sins can take away our appetite for God. Wanting a full wallet is not necessarily wrong. God wants to bless you and me. He wants to provide us with a full stomach and cozy bank accounts, but not if these luxuries lead us away from Him. God promises many blessings when we obey Him. God promises many blessings when we obey Him. But God wants to first empty us before He fills us. One way to be emptied is to humble ourselves before our brother and sister. To wash feet and to have our own feet washed. We are easy to feel awkward when someone to wash our own feet. The service is time for us to be served. Communion and foot washing is about being served. Just think about at the night on the Passover when Jesus washed his disciples. How would they feel when Jesus started washing their feet? This is something that we experience quarterly that God intentionally inviting us to be exposed to lower our self and ego. Many times we don't want to be embarrassed. But it is time that God wants us to have connection with God and connection with brother and sister. Even between spouses and children and parents is wonderful opportunity for us to taste the true gospel through on this ordinance of humility. So what happens after we have been emptied? Jesus fills us with himself. After we empty ourselves, Jesus fills us with himself. Jesus gives us his body and his blood, bread and fruit of the vine. It's been said that we are what we eat, both physically and spiritually. We are, in other, in other words, what we fill ourselves with. Now we are going to have response reading. 
And Dan and Edna are going to lead out the responsive reading. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered, answered him and said, and said to him, What, what I am doing, doing you do not, not understand, understand now, but, but you, you will know after this. this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you, Lord, and you, you say, say well, for so, so I, am. I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Amen. The Seventh-day Adventist Church practices open communion by that, we mean that you do not need to be a member of this local church or of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to partake, participate with us. We are happy to have you join us as we celebrate. As we partake of the ordinance of humility, our custom is ladies go to the fellowship hall and uh, for men, will be behind the, the divider curtain. curtain, yes. So after uh, the foot washing, uh, please come back to the sanctuary. Uh, we are con going to continue to have communion service. God bless you, and you may be dismissed.